Hi everyone, in this lecture we are going to see how Snowflake Spark connector works and also we will see with the sample program. And the Snowflake connector for Spark brings the Snowflake into a Spark ecosystem and it enables the Spark to read and write the data into Snowflake. And from this per perspective of Spark, if you see that Snowflake looks similar to other data source, similar to S3, HDFS, or CSV file, or Parquet, or ORC. And Snowflake supports from Spark two versions only. There is a separate version for a Snowflake Spark connector for each version of Spark. For example, Spark 2.1, 2.2, 2.3 has each and every versions of a Spark having a separate Snowflake connector. So you have to use the appropriate version for connecting with the Spark. And the dependencies which we have used in our program are these or these. And you have to copy this into a Maven or SB to avoid confusions. And this is this is the dependencies which I have added in the sample program which we are going to see in a few minutes. And if you didn't follow this, for example, I have used 2.3 versions of Spark. If you are not using 2.3, either maybe you use 2.2 or some other versions, then the dependency versions may change. At the time, you may face any of these issues. So at the time, depending on your Spark installation, some packages required by the connector may be missing. So you can add these missing packages to your installation by using appropriate flag for a Spark shell back. For example, if you are installing the uh, insta if you have downloaded the missing jars, you can use the hyphen hyphen jars and you can include the jar files and if you want to include the whole package, you have to use hyphen hyphen packages in the Spark shell. This is a sample command which you can give if the package missing is uh, HTTP components. You have to issue this. So if you are uh, facing an error while like uh, AWS Java package is missing, then you have to install these uh, packages in your spark shell either in a packages mode or in a jar mode we have already discussed this like snowflake provides a multiple version of a connector you have to download the appropriate version based on the following the version of a spark connector for spark you wish to use and the spark version maybe 2.1 or 2.2 or 2.3 and also a scala version maybe 2.10 or 2.11 based on these things only you have to decide which version you have to use so how this internally works snowflake spark connector is not exactly similar to jdbc connection but it also uses jdbc connection the first step when the contents of the data frame in will be moved to a staging area in s3 and once it is moved to the staging area from spark it uses a jdbc connection to connect with snowflake and it issues a copy command as a Final step, this copy command retrieves the data from the staging area in S3 and it will use the virtual warehouse of Snowflake and it will load it into the Snowflake tables. And now let's see these things in action. I'm going to a Scala IDE and in this Scala IDE, the, it is a sample program for reading and writing a data from Snowflake using a Spark Snowflake connector and also we are utilizing the utils package which it provides a method of run query from there you can directly issue a command into a snowflake it won't go through a snowflake spark connector it directly hits a snowflake and it runs there we will see these things in this program and i have in this credentials which i have commented it i have this in another class in sf credential which i have inherited here as it has some password details and also i have kept it in a, another class file and i have inherited into this program here as a first step i am reading the data from snowflake which is in this compacted table in this snowflake and i am printing the schema of that and again i am writing it into another table named spark snowflake table which is written from spark using a spark snowflake connector and at last we are going to read the data from the same table and i'm which and i'm going to just previously. printing it in this console at last which is this method which i which i said is like a, Using the run query method from provided from utils package, we can directly issue a snowflake command and this will not go through a spark snowflake connector. This will directly hit it into a snowflake. And let's run this program and I'll check what is the results. Yeah, now the program gets completed. If you check, it's reading the data from snowflake 
and I am printing the schema of the red table and I am just show the using a show command to show the data which is in data frame. This is actual data inside the table which we read and using this uh, and uh, once I have written it over to another name spark snowflake table and I am reading it again and uh, once it is read using the utils dot run query package we are just creating the same table in a different name name but we are using this utils dot run query package now we will go to snowflake web interface and look at into this newly created tables this is a table which is already present and we read this in spark and we write it in the spark snowflake table using a spark snowflake connector and we used utils dot run query method to issue the command directly into a snowflake and this will copy the data from spark snowflake table and it will create this table let's issue the command and check what are the data inside it if you check this is the four lines which is inside the compactor table and i'm selecting the spark snowflake table you can see the same data which is copied into this and at last sf table and eventually there also the same data will be there so what are the advantages of this spark snowflake connector why we are using is here this it reduces a many problem i have just recorded the three points which i am i faced recently when i was using it but there are a number of uh, advantages here using a spark snowflake connector the first is, is the data type mapping it will be taken care if you are reading a data from hive and if you are writing it into a snowflake that data frame the data which is you read it from a hive and it is converted into a data frame there will be a data type which is changed and you are going to write it into a snowflake which is a cloud database completely it's different from hadoop ecosystem and it is similar to a database so the using this spark snowflake connector it converts the data which is similar to hive and it was mapping the data to a snowflake and it creates the table you no need to create a table directly inside that spark will do that for you using this snowflake connector and default it will be enabled this query push down option which can significantly improve the performance of by pushing the query processing to snowflake if spark is using a snowflake as a data source it will check whether the running a complex query it will check if it can be run more faster in snowflake compared with spark it will push down the query to snowflake so this will happen only when snowflake is acted as a data source and also if you want to move the data into snowflake there is, you have to create a staging area and you have to move the data into staging area and you have to create the file format based on your uh, data and then you have to issue a copy command to move it into a snowflake all these manual steps will be reduced because of spark snowflake i missed it to mention here but it is a main advantage using a spark snowflake connected it, it will reduce your work and these are those three common issues which i have faced you may not face these things this may be similar simple issues but i just want to show it if you have faced this you can uh, this can help you so when i was using this jackson annotation object resolver is not found so by adding this maven dependency in the form.xml it was re resolved and the next error which i found was uh, this base64 util class not found error so when i added this it resolved the issue in maven dependency but the thing is this created a problem in another way i have used it in 1.2.1 version but actually it is expecting the other version in aws java sdk it was expecting the versions of 1.10 series previously we have used 1.2.1 this some of the packages which are available only in the later versions so make sure you are using the correct version and we are come to a final phase of our uh, lecture we have used spark snowflake connector to read and write the data from spark and uh, we have discussed how 
the spark snowflake connector works internally and also we have discussed how to execute the commands directly in say the snowflake in scala by using a run query method which is provided by utils package and we have discussed some advantages of spark snowflake connector there are many advantages and also we have discussed about the common errors thank you for watching and in the next lecture we will use the spark snowflake connector by leveraging the power of databricks